Hi students, good morning to one another. I am P. Saravanan, PGT Physics, Atomic Energy Central School No. 2, Kalpaka. Today, we are going to perform an experiment in physics, namely, focal length of a, a concave mirror. So, you must have studied in the theory classes, the two types of spherical mirrors. What are the two types of spherical mirrors? One is concave mirror. The other one is convex mirror. But we have chosen the concave mirror. So concave mirror is also called by another name that is called converging mirror. Because when parallel rays are incident on a concave mirror, they all will be reflected and converging at a point called principal focus. Okay. Now for any mirror, there are different positions of the object and the corresponding positions of the image. Now you can see that uh, this is uh, the concave mirror whose uh, reflecting surface is bulged inwards and uh, it is facing towards the left. P is the point called the pole, pole of the mirror. This line passing through the pole of the mirror is called as the principal axis. Along the principal axis, this point F is called the principal focus. This point C is called the center of curvature. And O, O dash is an object. The object is represented by a straight line with an arrow head. So this type of object represented by a straight line is called a linear object. It is a linear object and always the object should be placed perpendicular to the principal axis. Okay. Now, where is the position of the object as per this diagram is? It is beyond the center of curvature, beyond the 2F. So, where is the image formed? Let us see now. Now, two incident rays, two incident rays we have considered. One incident ray parallel to the principal axis. So, the reflected ray will pass through the principal focus. So you can see that uh, this is passing through the principal focus. Another ray is uh, incident at the pole itself and it gets reflected such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So there are two incident rays and uh, corresponding uh, two reflector rays. Can you see that the two reflector rays are meeting at this point? Yes, at this point only the image will be formed. So, we have to drop a perpendicular from the principal axis to the point where the two reflector rays are intersecting. This straight line, inverted straight line is the image formed at that point. So, we find from this picture that when the object is placed beyond the center of curvature C, the image is being formed between F and C. And also from the picture it is very clear that the size of the image is smaller than the size of the object. Such image is called diminished image. Also, you see that it is an inverted image. The object is erect upwards and the image is inverted downwards. So, it is also called as inverted image. And this inverted image can be caught on a screen. We can catch the image on the screen. So, it is also called as real image. So, what are the three names we have given to this image? One is diminished image because its size is smaller than that of the object. It is inverted image okay, because it is found below the principal axis. Third, it is called real image because it can be caught on the screen. Okay. Now, if you go towards the mirror, that is, when you take the object closer and closer at C, then between F and C, at F, between P and F, as you go closer and closer, what will happen? The size of the image will become more and more bigger. It will be enlarged. It is also called as magnified image. And at one stage, when you keep the object between the pole and the focus, then what type of image you are going to get, I have shown in the second picture. So in the second picture you can see that the object O, O dash is placed between the, the principal focus and the pole of the mirror. So 
corresponding two incident rays I have taken. One ray is parallel to the principal axis, so it is a reflected. Okay, the reflected ray passes through the principal focus. Similarly, another incident ray which is incident at the pole of the mirror, it is getting reflected at the same angle. So that uh, these two rays are expanding. So in front of the mirror, these two reflected rays will never meet because they are diverging. Now these two rays are expanding. So I produce these two rays on the other side of the mirror. I produce the two rays on the other side of the mirror. So these produced rays should not be drawn by a continuous line. It should be shown by a dotted line only. So can you see that the two dotted lines are meeting at one point? So I I dash is the image. Can you see that image this time is formed above the principal axis? Yes. So this image is also erect image. It is bigger in size than that of the object. Now this is called as enlarged image or magnified image. But this can never be caught on the screen. Understand? So it is called as virtual image. Okay. Now the distance from the pole to the object is called object distance u. And the distance from the pole to the image is called as what? Image distance v. And the distance from the pole to the focus is called as focal length. We are going to determine the focal length of a concave mirror by using the mirror formula which is given like this 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v or f is equal to u v by u plus v by applying sign conventions uh, since the object is uh, on the left side of the mirror against the direction of light object distance is negative the image also is formed in front of the mirror to the left side of the mirror it is also negative focal length f also is negative so totally while determining the focal length we have to represent the focal length by a negative sign now shall we proceed the experiment students fine okay students now this is the given concave mirror so it's a reflecting surface is bulged inwards so when you take this concave mirror it should be placed on a stand mirror stand like this okay it is a v-shaped mirror stand so on this stand, mirror should be placed safely for mounting the mirror. Okay, can you all see? Next, the object is placed in front of the mirror. Is it not? The object is placed. What type of object we are going to use here for a demonstration of the experiment? This is the object. This is a wire mesh. A wire mesh which is illuminated by a bulb placed inside. So you can see that there is a bulb placed inside. Okay, bulb is inside. So I keep the mesh outside and the bulb is placed inside. So that the wire mesh is illuminated. Okay. So what is the object used here is the illuminated wire mesh. On the screen, you are going to form the image of this wire mesh only, not the bulb. Bulb is only the source of light. Bulb is not the object. Okay, students, bulb is used to illuminate the object, that's all, for a better image. Now, where is the image being formed now? On the screen like this, a white screen like this. So, on the flat surface of the screen, we form the image of the wire mesh. So, that the distance between, the distance between uh, the mirror and the object, mirror and uh, this object, uh, this is called as object distance. And... Uh, the distance between the mirror and the, the screen okay so this is the image distance this is measured by using a meter scale like this 100 centimeter okay a meter scale we are going to use now actual source of light is the bulb and the object is the illuminated wire mesh before doing the experiment first we are going to determine the approximate focal length of the mirror what is the approximate focal length of the mirror has to be determined before performing the experiment by UV method so for that I place the concave mirror towards a distant object that is object at infinity so we have very well studied that when the object is at infinity means the image will be formed exactly at the focus is it not that so I am going to form the diminished image of an object which is kept at infinity 
so that parallel rays from the object at infinity will fall on the mirror and all will be converged all the reflected rays will be converged at the principal focus so that directly it gives the distance between the image and the mirror is equal to what the focal length that is approximate focal length then by experimental method uv method we will be confirming whether it is true or not so for that now i am going to take you to the distant object method be ready ah uh, yes students now are you able to see one building behind the window of the physics lab along with some branches of the trees okay these objects like uh, that building and uh, the trees outside the lab uh, at very far off distance can be considered to be object at infinity so now for distant object method i am going to consider that building as the distant object at infinity i am going to receive parallel rays from that building and uh, the image of the building will be formed on the screen now i am going to show that to you yes students can you all see here one mirror is placed on the table okay now i am going to place the screen in front of the mirror now the mirror is focusing the building which is outside the physics lab i showed you just now i am going to receive the image of that building on the screen so now i place the screen in front of the mirror and i move towards the mirror are you all able to see some changes taking place on the screen yes now you see here there is a a very sharp image okay this is a the very sharp and inverted image of the building so this is the image are you all able to see the image of the building on the screen okay so where is the image formed is called the principal focus of the mirror and the distance between the midpoint of the mirror to the midpoint of the screen is the exact or approximate focal length of the mirror okay see this is the sharp image i am going to measure the distance so i take a chalk piece and i mark the midpoint of a the position of the mirror and the midpoint of the position of the screen and using a, a half meter scale i am going to measure the distance between okay distance between uh, the two so the distance between the two is uh, 18.5 cm 18.5 cm that is the approximate focal length of this mirror which i am going to confirm by doing the experiment uh, by uv method okay students did you all understand how to find the distant object method the approximate focal length okay fine let us go to the demonstration table okay hi students now the two types of images namely the magnified image and the diminished image you are going to witness so you can see here this is the source this is the source kept inside and this wire mesh is the object kept outside so this wire mesh acts as a illuminated object and can you see the mirror is placed at this position here the mirror is placed in front of the object now this screen screen is placed here an image is formed you can see an image is formed the image of the wire mesh which is bigger in size than that of the object can you find that the size of the image is bigger than the size of the object yes such an image only is called as magnified image or enlarged image now when will you get such an enlarged image as this mirror is brought closer and closer to the object now i am going to take i am going to take this mirror away from the object okay you see here i am going to increase the distance between the object and the mirror now the size of the image will become smaller and smaller yes can you see this small sized image is the size of the image formed on the screen is smaller than the size of the object such image only is called as diminished image okay yes now let us uh, begin the demonstration of the actual experiment ah uh, yes students now we are arranging the table and getting ready for uh, taking the observations we are going to measure the object distance u and the image distance v from which we are going to determine the focal length okay now can you all see this is the object this uh, wire mesh is illuminated by a bulb and this is the object so any distance of the object should be measured from this plane surface now this is a meter scale 
I am going to place the meter scale on the table in the correct position such that the zero, the zero of the meter scale is coinciding with the, the surface, plane surface of the object. Now, I take the mirror along with the stand and uh, I place the center, the center that is pole, pole of the mirror, okay, center of the stand is called the pole of the mirror. Approximately, I will place this at a distance 30, okay. Now, you can see the distance between the object and the mirror is uh, 30 centimeter, okay. So, this is the position, this is the position of the object. So, object is at a distance of 30 centimeter from the mirror. Afterwards, I can remove, I can remove this uh, and I can mark the position of the object with the chalk piece mark, okay, with the chalk piece. I have marked the position of the object on both sides also, if you wish, you can mark. Then I can remove the scale. Now the screen is interposed, uh, okay, in front of the mirror and slightly adjusted for uh, obtaining the image. Now, can you all see the enlarged image? Is it very clearly visible? You can come and uh, see the image very clearly. So, I will take a chalk piece and I will note down the position of the image. I will note down the position of the image on both sides and then I can remove the screen. Now, I take this scale and I am going to measure the distance between the two chalk piece marks. So, the left side is uh, the position of the left chalk piece mark is the position of the image and the right chalk piece is uh, the position of the mirror. So, the distance between uh, the two is uh, found to be 42.5, 42.5, this distance uh, is uh, 42.5 centimeter. So, we kept uh, initially the object at a distance of 30 centimeter. So, I am going to note down in the notebook. So, 30 centimeter is the object distance and 42.5 centimeter is the image distance. Okay, like this. Next reading we are going to take. Yes, students, now I am going to assume the object distance as 32 centimeter. So, the pole of the mirror, that is the center of the stand, should coincide with the 32 centimeter this time. 32 centimeter. Can you all see? Now I am going to mark this, okay, position of the mirror with the chalk piece. Okay, then I can remove the scale. Now the screen is brought, the screen is brought uh, and the image is uh, being formed, slight adjustment of the mirror. Can you all see that image is formed? Can you all see the image? You see very closely, this is the image, okay, enlarged image. So as usual, I am going to note down, okay, with the help of a chalk piece mark. So this chalk piece mark uh, on both sides, okay, this is the chalk piece mark corresponding to the image. So, I measure the distance between the two chalk piece marks. The left side chalk mark is uh, the image position. The right side chalk mark is uh, the object position. So, this time it is 38.5 centimeter. 38.5 centimeter. Okay. Now, I have taken this in the notebook. 38.5. Okay. So, these are the uh, methods how to do the experiment. Similarly, the remaining two readings, uh, when you come to the lab, uh, you will be observing. Now, four observations I have taken totally, two of which I have shown you very clearly. The other two observations I am not going to show you now. So, you will come and do it in the lab. So, I am going to write all the four observations which I have taken now. Four values of U corresponding four values of V. I am going to summarize this in a tabular column on the board. Are you all ready for that? Okay. Hi students. So just now we have uh, demonstrated the experiment and we have taken four observations. Two of which we have seen the live session and two I have taken the summary of uh, the object distance u and the image distance v I have written on the board. So the object distance uh, u is expressed in centimeter and the image distance V is also expressed in centimeter. Then the focal length uh, by using the mirror formula, uh, F is also expressed in centimeter. Now normally these observations are written uh, in positive, 
but actually by sign conventions if you apply means the object distance the image distance and the focal length is also negatively so the calculations as usual we will do and finally in the result we will write we will express the focal length as a negative value so the calculation how to do this is uh, you can use a calculator if you want okay so f is equal to so f is equal to this is ub by u plus b so that uh, this is now equal to u and b values are given 30 and 42.5 so this is 30 into 42.5 divided by 30 plus 42.5 30 plus 42.5 so this is now equal to so 30 into 42.5 i am going to use this calculator now okay so 30 multiplied by 42.5 42.5 so this is coming as 1275 so 1 2 7 5 divided by 72.5 if you add so this is a 72.5 and uh, the ratio of this uh, 1275 so 1 2 7 5 divided by 72.5 so this is found to be 17.6 so this is a 17.60 centimeter okay this is a 17.60 centimeter so as i told you that the final value you will express is negative not in every calculation so the first value of the focal length is found to be 17.6 centimeter now the second the second one is f is equal to same formula again and again we need not write this is the direct value of u and v so u is 32 and v is 38.5 so this is a 32 32 into 38.5 divided by 32 plus 38.5 so i am going to multiply once again the numerator 32 into 38.5 is coming as 1232 divided by 32 plus 38 is 70 so the denominator is 70.5 so 1232 by 70.5 we are using the calculator so 1 2 3 2 divided by 70.5 so this is found to be 17.47 17.47 okay centimeter now the third one okay f is now equal to the third one is 40 32.5 so this is 40 into 32.5 divided by 40 plus 32.5 so 40 into 32.5 40 into 32.5 so this is found to be 40 into 32.5 is found to be 1300 1300 divided by 40 plus 32, this is 72.5. Okay. So 1300, 1300 divided by 72.5. So it is found to be 17.93. This is 17.93 centimeter. And the last one, okay, F is equal to now 42 into 30.5. This is 0.5. So 42. 42 into 30.5 30.5 divided by 42 plus 30.5 so this ratio 42 so 42 into 30.5 so this is now equal to 1281 so this is 1281 divided by 42 42 plus 30 is 72 so this is 72.5 once again so this is 72.5 so this ratio of 1281 so 1281 divided by 72.5 so this is divided by 72.5 it is found to be 17.66 17.66 centimeter so you can Recheck with the help of your calculator. Now, four values of the focal length we have got all are very close to each other. I am going to summarize them with the tabular column under the column focal length F. So, what is the first value of focal length is 
the second value is 17.47 so this is 17.47 the third value is 17.93 and the fourth one is 17.66 so uh, four values of the focal length when we get what is the usual method we will add all the four values and divide by four so you will get the average value called the mean focal length the mean value of the focal length so that i am going to find here so mean f mean focal length f okay mean focal length f equal to the four values i will add so 17.60 17.60 plus 17.47 plus 17.93 plus 17.66. So we add all these four and then divide this by four. So I am going to use the calculator again. I will add these four values. So first one is 17.60. Plus seventeen point four seven, seventeen point four seven, plus seventeen point nine three, seventeen point nine three, plus seventeen point double six. Okay, seventeen point double six. So if you add means, if you add means, seven zero point double six is coming. Divide this by four. So seven zero, seven zero point double six divided by Four is equal to seventeen point six six five is coming. So this is a seventeen point six six five, or this is nearly equal to seventeen point seven centimeter. Okay. So finally, what is the mean value of the focal length we are getting is seventeen point seven. So we can write like this therefore f is equal to minus of 17.7 cm so this is uh, the experimentally determined value of the focal length so we started the experiment uh, by assuming the focal length our approximate focal length was determined by the distant object method it was 18 plus cm was coming but now we have got 17.7 so this must be the true value of the focal length so this method of determining the focal length is called uv method and the initial method by which approximate focal length we have done is called distant object method when you come to higher classes you will also do it by another method called conjugate foci method now also in the 10th standard if you plot a graph if you plot a graph by taking the object distance along the x axis and image distance along the y axis uh, by graphical method also we can determine but uh, that method is uh, not uh, included for our syllabus only you are just uh, plotting the points in a graph that's all you take a graph sheet and uh, take a suitable scale along the x axis for the image distance or uh, along the x axis object distance if you take means image distance should be along the y axis sir. so you will plot these points sir, and try to draw the graph i hope you have understood this experiment fine